Ross Peltier, first of all, congratulations on the 100th career appearance against the Batley Bulldogs, Sunday gone. And then the other congratulations is on a 16-0 win. A real yeah. positive result for the club. Yeah, it was a big result. You know, we come up back a three losses, you know, so um, it was important we got a win. Um, you know, especially in this fight for, for playoffs. And, um, you know, with Halifax not picking up a win and, and us getting a win, you know, we've moved that little bit above them. And, you know, we're still in touching distance of playoffs. And, you know, after losing that quarter-final, um, playoffs is the aim, you know, that's the goal. And we want a good playoff run and, you know, anything can happen. And so, yeah, big, big win. Um, personally for myself, 100 games. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to hit that point, really. Um, yeah, so it was, it was a good day. When you look at the, the club in 2019, a couple of uh, critics might be looking at the, the offence and the attack, but the defence has been a, a real strong point in 2019. Fourth best defence in the, the championship uh, is not to be sniffed at. No, you know, it's a tough league isn't it? and everyone can score points. And, you know, it, it, with his half backs changing um, so much, you know, Rowan getting injured against Halifax, you know, and, and Keyes been out all year, Mike Wilder having to slot in a half, sometimes Minnie having to slot in a half, you know. It, it has been a bit disjointed at times and, you know, we're having to adjust week week by week. But uh, I think right now, I think what we've seen at Batley, I think we've played some of his best rugby really, but the conditions are how it was. You know, it didn't convert into many points, but I think we started to look and, and build the framework there for the good attack. And, you know, I think what John said, you know, as long as you defend, well, um, you're always in the shot of a game, and as long as we've got that desperation, we're always in chance of a ga um, winning a game, really. And our completion rate were pretty, pretty average uh, on Sunday, but because the defence was so good, it helped us win the game, really. So, yeah, um, it's tough week in week out. You know, we've had a few off weeks, but you know, I think what we do well as a group, we we like to regroup and. And yeah, we've started that regroup now, we've got back on ours and we had a good win and a, a nil, you know, builds confidence really, yeah. How do you assess the, the season to date? Because obviously 16 rounds of the championship gone, Bradford just two points outside of the, the top five and I think it's uh, no mistake to see both promoted sides of York and Bradford, you know, flying so highly in the in the championship. This season gone, obviously there was the, the Challenge Cup run, that mammoth win against Leeds and then the heartache and disappointment against Halifax, but certainly as we head to and look forward to Sunday's trip to the Lee Sports Village against the Lee Centurions, there's a, a real air of posi positivity uh, and, and a real determination that the, the club can be in the mix at the end of the season in those top five playoffs. Yeah, I think um, if you just said to said to me at the start of the season, you know, you'll, you'll get to a Challenge Cup quarter final, you'll beat Leeds on the way to that, and um, after that, you'll still be in the midst of playoffs, two points off over halfway gone now. Well, I think we're a few games over halfway gone now. Um, you know, we, we'd have took it. You know, this year's always been a, a building year for us, you know, just to stay as clear as a, as a championship side again, you know, a very tough championship, and, you know, just compete and do well. You know, if you look at them at home, grown players who've, who've Come through this club who were, who were playing week in week out. You know we've got an emerging halfback who's come out and he, you know until he broke his leg he, he was doing some wonderful things. You know I think it, you'd have took that and where we're sat right now, where we're poised right now. You know we're in we're in a good position. We're in a touching distance at playoffs and yeah it's been a good year so far. I'd say on, on the whole you know to say no one really expected us to do much. Um, for everyone expected us to stay up. Obviously we won't uh, expect us to go down but. You know, we, we, we said as a goal we want to be in that top five, uh, we want to be in the mix and then, you know, if we finish in playoffs um, at, by the end of the year, it stands in real good stead to build on that for the year after, you know, so, yeah, I'm happy with how everything's gone and it's, it's, it's been a good season so far, we've had ups, we've had downs, we've had a, um, we've had a very busy schedule um, of late with a lot of games and, you know, even that Barra game of a week, people are impressed with some of the deb debutants, you know, of, I think we'll have a lot more Ross Oaks, Liam Kirks, Ethan Ryan's coming through the club, you know, with the, with the talent that's playing that 19s and, you know, on that reserve side. Um, yeah, I think it's positive times for the club and, you know, it is, this season will be a massive platform for us to build on for next year, isn't it? Massive game on, on Sunday against the Lee Centurions, uh, as we discussed last weekend, Halifax drop points, there's only rarely Levy Bradford this weekend from the round 17 fixtures where you've got two of those top five sides who are going to be taking points off each other so to go to the Lee Sports Village Ross and, and get two points would be a massive result. 
Yeah, you know, and, and, and to beat Lee home and away, that'll be massive for us because they're, they're, um, they're like our rivals in this, in this fight for playoffs. And, you know, Lee's always a tough place to go. Um, you know, they've brought in Jordy Thompson as well to some reinforcements, really. But uh, I think Ryan Braley's gone over to Toronto. So, you know, it's going to be a tough game. But we know if we defend and, and we attack how we do, or maybe Keys will be back, hopefully. But um, might be too soon. But, you know, I think with what we saw at Batley, with Mini dropping into a ball point 13, I think it gives us some real good attacking options. And on that park, in this weather, you know, it's a real leveller. Um, so yeah, we'll go there and we'll, we'll, we'll hope to build on that defensive display of, of last week and you know, anything can happen and it'll be a very interesting game and you know, it's a massive, massive four points to beat Lee home and away and you know, we, we'll, we'll be, I think the confidence will be back then, we'll, we'll be on the, on the back of a good run again because we've got some tough games coming up. You mentioned the, the homegrown players as a, an air of fearlessness about them when you speak to them on, on the corridors and there's a genuine belief that the side can go to Lee and can get the two points. Yeah, we believe we can go anywhere and do well. You know, if you look at our Leeds game, no one gives us a chance. You know, um, I think we've, we've, we've always given a good account of ourselves in, in big games, even at Halifax game, like quite final. I think we just fell short in, in, in certain areas, you know, and it's one of those things. I think, yeah, there's that fearlessness, um, there's that passion to play for the club, and there's just um, everybody wants to do well, really. And yeah, every, everyone's just, just looking to build on everything and, and, and play well, and I think that. With so many homegrown players, I think for the lads playing in reserves, for the lads playing in 19s, they can see that pathway, they can see that progression. That if you actually play well at this club, then you know you will get your shot, and John will give you a chance, and and you and you will play if you look at Doyle and that this year. So yeah, it's just everything's building and everything's um, just going in the right direction. Yeah. And it must be great, Ross, because obviously you're a Bradfordian like myself. We've grown up in the city of Bradford. We've grown up with the Bradford Bulls in the Super League and then there's been all the pain of the, the relegations, the administrations and now to see that rebuilding process and as you say, some of the younger players, your Keelan Fosters, your Will Adams, your Cameron <coughs> Berries, your Tom Doyles, they can see that there's a clear pathway through from the scholarship academy into the first team, it's all looking rosy again. Yeah, I think one thing about Bradford, one thing you can't knock Bradford for is that pathway and that um, progression and, and promoting players has always been there throughout the club, even from when I was a kid, you know, me and Steve come through and you saw like it's Elliot Whitehead, um, you know, more my area, George and Tom Burgess I played with um, when we were 16 at Bradford, um, James Donaldson, all, all these boys I played with and, you know, all these boys have gone on to do wonderful things for Bradford's first team <clears throat> and I think that tradition has not gone. Um, and even though it's sad we lost John Bastian, I think that tradition will still run through the club. You know, if, if you do well and you work hard and, and you have a love for the club, then, you know, the club will reward you. Unlike some places where, you know, the youth system don't really work. I think with us, we've got a promising youth system. And yeah, he, he, I think everyone's seen the, the fruition of it and the fruits of it. I know a lot of people talk about, you know, if we'd have kept all these players, you know, what team they've had. But, you know, that's not how sport is when players develop and, and then they move on. But, you know, it, it's good that a lot of young Bradford talent comes through the club and you know they're the lifeblood of the club you know it's the people and the lads so yeah I think that's what's helped the club through these tough times you know if you look back um, relegation season it was all a lot of young lads and then you look at the promotion season they're all a lot of young Bradford lads so yeah that's the key to this club I feel and yeah it's looking healthy right now. Let's focus a little bit on yourself Ross obviously you come through the Bradford Bulls scholarship you then left and went to Huddersfield, you then ended up at Keefley and then you got the call from Chev Walker and Rowan Smith to rejoin the Bradford Bulls and the rest, you might say, is, is history. But let's talk about some of the drives and determination and the goals that you've set yourself because it must be said it has been quite a, a whirlwind 18 months for you. Yeah, it's one of them, you know, I, I, started, I started playing rugby by accident really. Um, yeah, I used to be a footballer, my brother was a footballer, you know, my dad, my uncles all played football to a good standard. Um, and I was just a bit, I was just a big lad and yeah, I ended up playing rugby by accident and after playing, I played one game against Siddle and I can't remember his name, I still see him at games sometimes. You know, old scout, used to be a scout, signed me on scholarship after one game and then, you know, you say the rest is history. I got 16 year old, like I said, there were like um, George, Tom Burgess, James Donaldson, all them boys. Um, you know, Bradford told me to go play amateur for a year and then probably sign back 18s. I didn't want to do that. Um, then Huddersfield offered me a deal. You know, it went well there. I, I went at Huddersfield. You know, went first team there. Didn't work out. Didn't get a shot and that. So I went over to Australia for a bit. You know, just played. Didn't think I was going to do all then. Yeah, came at Keefley. 
in and out of the squad. Uh, for my first year, I played about 10 games. My second year at Keith, I played like two games. I went to play rugby union and I, I thought that was it for me in, in professional rugby league. I thought, yeah, I would done that. I played a bit of union. Um, and I thought, yeah, I just played rugby for the fun of it, really. Then, you know, Keithley asked me to go back, have another year there. And yeah, I had a big, I had quite a big year. And, um, you know, I, I played very well. Uh, scored a lot of tries from front row in League One, really. And then, yeah, I got, got a call from Rowan and Kevin said, you know, would I want to come to Bradford? And, you know, when I come come here with my dad, and, you know, there was no hesitation. There was no other club I'd, I'd want to go to, you know. You know there were other clubs offering me, but I wasn't even going to entertain any. I didn't even think about, oh, you know, wanting to sign here, come here, and it, it was that relegation year. It was, it was a tough year, you know. It, it, it was tough, but I was just happy to be playing for the club I love and, you know, be, being a Bradford player. And, you know, we went down, and then, yeah, we had the last year's season, which, you know, we got promotion and we were good. And then, you know, we're going well this year, and it's just like um, every day I'm just happy to, to play for the club, really. I, yeah, it's one of them. Um, Proud every day and see my family proud. It's what I wanted to do um, when I first started playing rugby, and you know I'm, I'm doing it and I want to do it as long as I can. You know I think over my hundred games you'll see over half of them have been for Bradford. So I've not really played much rugby before I come here. You know forty odd games on it for Keighley. That's it. Um, so yeah, in the past three years I've played a lot of rugby and I've enjoyed it and I think I've started to you know yeah see how I want to play and yeah I'm just excited for the future and just yeah do what I can while I'm here. Yeah. You recently had a, a World Cup uh, training camp with the Jamaican side. That's got to be on your radar, one of the goals, Ross, to feature over here in 2021 for the Jamaican Rugby League team. Oh, yeah, he's massive. You know, I've, I've been playing for Jamaica for 10 years now, if you, you can believe it. I'm only 27, so, yeah, I went to America, first World Cup qualifiers when I was, well, I think I was 18, so, yeah, nine years ago. Um, it's been a long old journey. Um, yeah, it's me, me and Mario Caro, I think. Where we've been there for, for a long time. We were both went over when we were young lads and it's been a up and down journey, it's been a whirlwind and we've seen how the game's progressed over there. We've seen how the um, and we've built on the World Cup qualifiers and I think yeah, with the likes of Ashton Golding, Ben Jones Bishop, you know, Jacob Ogden from London Broncos, um, and, and the lads who, who like Lamont Bryant, Joe Browns, Omar Caros and, and all that, I think we had the best team we've had in a World Cup qualifiers and we've seen that like, this is the best chance we've ever had and after we beat Canada so convincingly we thought you know what this American game it's a big game you know they had they had a Farimo from LFC and they had a few Aussies in there and we we thought yeah let's go for it let's do it and, and we finally did it and that, I'll, that was probably the most emotional game of my life you know I see so many grown men crying their eyes out because we've done so much so massive and then you know it kind of you forget about it, it died down and then you know the, you know Alex Simmons and uh, Jason Robinson are, are on board now running operations over here and they've got all the lads in and the excitement's there you know we've got a we've got a really big um, friendly in October uh, I can't say who it is yet but it's a it's a massive game and I think a lot of Bradford fans will, will want to get to that game um, yeah it's just exciting you know who doesn't want to play in the World Cup that's been a dream and you know now I've got a chance to play in the World Cup and I think all the boys have got their eyes on that, and just these next two years, you've got to play the best rugby you can because you know competition for places is hotting up. You know a lot of Super League talents joining the team now, so yeah, it's exciting. And yeah, I know the World Cup in England will be will be massive, and yeah, it's massive for the nation over there. Yeah. And just finally, Ross, you've done 100 career appearances. Is to the next 100. I think if your loyalty was to be rewarded when you're doing career appearance number 200. It would uh, certainly uh, be pretty special if that was for the Bradford Bulls in Super League. Yeah, it would be. It would be. It would be mental. That it would be um, a real good journey, and hopefully that can happen. And yeah, I feel I've got a lot more games. Me, I've got easily got another 100, 200 in me. So yeah, <laughs> I'm excited for for the next hundred, and yeah, see what happens. And that that's the aim, you know, getting Bradford back in the Super League. And you know, that's that's a that's something I said I wanted to do when we got relegated. That day we got relegated, and I was like, right, I want to be here for when. You know, we get back to Super League and yeah, hopefully we can do it.